Guys, stay till the end of the video. I promise you won't regret it. This is the coconut honey iced latte. So first you wanna combine your coconut milk and your honey, add espresso to your cup with some ice, and then add your coconut honey mixture, and then put in a straw and enjoy. <laughs> it's a little bit thick, so if you don't like thicker drinks, then I would water the mixture down a little, but that's a winner for sure. Do we keep the pillow? No. Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to Coffee Time with Colton. It has been such a long time since I've made a coffee with you guys. This one has probably been my favorite one so far. Uh, it's coconut, honey coconut iced latte. Pretty thick, pretty sweet, just how I like it. <laughs> okay, anyway, today I'm sorry to inform you that this video is going to be a bit less lighthearted and I'm more serious. We're talking about hope really stuck out at me and I thought that I needed to share this with you guys so let's start then hey so this what I'm calling this is hope and putting in the work so we're gonna start off with Romans 12 12 Roman 12 12 says rejoice in hope be patient in tribulation and be constant in prayer so what I get from that is that when you you have to rejoice in hope you have to maintain a lifestyle where you're always hopeful towards the next thing to what god has put onto your heart losing hope or corrupted hope is not good and i'll i'll, I'll tell you a little more about that in a second but um be patient in tribulation meaning you got to you got to be patient you got to wait through the tough times so all of 2020 um, and then be constant in prayer. You have to constantly be working and praying with the, your patience, your hope. You've got to, it's, it's almost like it works together, like a nice blend of ingredients to make the perfect latte. Anyway, um, hoping for something is only half the battle. The other half of the battle is working towards it. Maintaining hope is probably one of the most powerful things you can do, but if you don't act on it or you don't work towards what you're hoping for, it's not good. I'll, I'll give you an analogy. So, for example, you have a, a glass of milk where that milk is our hope, okay? If you don't do anything with it and you leave it out for a while, it's going to go sour. And then when you drink it, it's going to poison you. Same thing with hope. If you have hope and you don't do anything with it, you leave it there, you don't feed, you don't pray on it, and most importantly, you don't have people supporting you with it, it's gonna go sour and it's gonna start to poison you and it's going to start corrupting, um, corrupting you if you don't pray about it, you don't read the Bible. One of the most important things that has been said to me is you are the sum of your five greatest friends. What does that mean? It means you're not better than them and you're not worse than them. So if you have five really not good friends, you're going to be like them. You can't necessarily change them. So what does that mean for your hope? Well, it'll start corrupting in a way it's not meant to, to suit their narrative. But when you have five really close friends and you look up to them, you're not gonna be worse than them. The only thing that you can do is you can grow with them. And then if they're good, healthy, God-fearing people, your hope will also grow with them. That's, that's some good. Mm. Um, anyway, so the next really important thing to remember when you're trying to make sure that um, your hope is, you're hoping for the right thing, is pray. And everyone's like, like oh, well, like, yeah. You can do prayer is probably the strongest thing you can do. When you keep connected to the one who designed, you know, your whole entire existence, <laughs> I think that goes without saying that he will plant dreams in your heart. He'll put hopes there. Um, another thing I'm going to talk about is what bad hope looks like. 
So this is very easy to spot. Bad, bad hope or corrupted hope is when someone is hoping for something that is not supported in the Bible. That's one sign of corrupted hope. Another sign of corrupted hope is when someone tries to correct this person or tries to help this person um, and they do the foolish thing and say that you're wrong and they're right and they're always right. They refuse to be helped. That is another sign of corrupted hope because that shows that they can't listen, that they've it's been corrupted enough that they feel almost as if it's the only thing they can hold on to. And then since they're holding on to something that shouldn't be there in the first place, it's going to slowly envelop them and they'll be in a very unhealthy place. I was there once, not good. Don't do it, don't recommend it, take correction. But by the grace of God, I was able to find these amazing people who have just made sure that I was okay and make sure that I was on the straight and narrow. They've helped me with my relationship with God. I've grown so much with them and it would not, I would not be where I am today if it weren't for all of these people. So I really have nothing to say except thank you so much. People can come and go, but the memories that you make with them stay forever. And I'm so thankful for everyone in my life. Thank you.